Okay, so what you see here is a terminal on your right where we're going to look at the Kubernetes cluster running MongoDB. We can get the pods from the namespace, which we're going to be working out of today, Mongo2. And you can see there's a single MongoDB deployment, which is just a single pod stateful set, and it's up and running. So what we're going to do is drop into the MongoDB pod and interact with the server through the CLI and create a database and add some data to it so that when we uh, perform our backup and restore, we have something to reference. So here we have a user, a single user, and we're just going to add a, um, a second user here so that we have some data to reference. Okay, name, another name, really sophisticated. But now you can see there are two records, uh, your name and another name. So Kubernetes 12 is running the Mongo2 namespace and MongoDB container we're working with. You can see there's a service, staple set, persistent volume claims, uh, config maps, secrets, all associated with this database. So we're just gonna click back up on the entire namespace, give it a name, uh, give it a backup location, which are all pre-configured, and choose to backup now, not on the schedule, and choose our pre and post backup rules, which are going to flush and lock and unlock our database after the snapshot is taken and the backup is triggered. A simple label here can also be created. So now that we have created the backup, it should go through a various different processes of pending to in progress. You can see two volumes are starting to be backed up. Um, I think the staple set was two nodes at some point, so there's actually two PVCs. But either case, it's grabbing everything in that namespace, so there is two there. Um, you can see there's all the secret and config map and stateful set information that's backed up with the application. And it's just, it's just finalizing all those Kubernetes objects. And now you can see the backup is a success. So now what we're going to do is simulate a failure. Uh, the simplest way to do this is let's just blow away the entire namespace that Mongo is running in, uh, which could be an administration error or maybe a developer accidentally runs this command that has too many permissions. Just gives you an idea of a possible failure where you can restore from. So now that Mongo2 is all deleted, we should be able to see that there's no pods in this namespace. Uh, the namespace doesn't actually exist. <laughs> um, so what we can do is restore our Mongo database. So what you'll do is give it a name, Mongo restore, bunch of zeros, and one is what we're using here. And we're going to make sure and replace any existing resources, meaning that if there's anything left or maybe the namespace wasn't completely cleaned up, we're going to head and force all those to be restored from our backup. So once we do that, we click restore. Again, there'll be a similar process for going through the different states, such as pending and progress and success or failure. The first thing it'll do is restore the PVCs, which really hold any data associated with the stateful set. Uh, in this case, it's going to make sure that data is there and available, then restore the objects, such as the stateful set object itself, which will start up the pods and allow them to use the PVs that are there. So now we can see that all resources have been restored. Our, our restore is a success, and all those objects are now restored. And we can see this reflected in our namespace as the container comes back up because the staple set did get restored. So it's making sure and spinning up that replica. And in the JSON view, we can see that it did in fact use our pre and post exec rules. So we know that we should have a uh, consistent and valid backup of our data. So now that it's running, this is great because we've now seemingly successfully restored our database, but now we're just going to go back into the pod and verify that the data that we had before still exists.
So we're gonna use the same training and uh, authentication we did before because all that is stored in our secrets and PV. And we're going to look at the users and there are two records. So looks like everything worked. And that's uh, backing up and restoring MongoDB with pre and post backup rules. Until next time, take care.